You know, welcome to UFC middleweight Ian Heinish. Ian, thank you for the time today, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. We will take the first set of questions from Gabriel Ross with Caveside Press. Hello, Ian. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I mean, Ian, a couple of days out from a fight, you obviously got a big name opponent. Just can you talk about the emotions going into this one? Uh, just feel, just feeling cool, calm, collected. Um, you know, the the first few days had just a little bit of paranoia about getting sick, but that's all past. I feel good. The weight cuts beginning, and uh, just more excited than anything. You know, this opportunity. I've been dreaming about it. I've been working for it for a long time. So, um, ready for it to come to fruition on Saturday. I know you fought in the you know quote unquote pandemic era already, but I wonder you know. Fighters, you know, you got a routine for fight week, and it's been very standard throughout your career. As things have changed now with the hotel and all that, how, I guess, what have you changed about your fight week routine? Do you bring some stuff with you to deal with all that hotel room time? What what have you brought differently lately that you didn't before? Um, you know, basically, I turned my room into, like, a recovery room. I got my air relax boots. I got my rad roller set just for rollout tool tools. I got the hypervolt, so I can just really do a lot of recovery stuff in the room. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, you, we don't have the entourage around, so um, usually every night we do, like, a little bee study, Bible study at night. So we get on a Zoom call with all my, my closest people and my entourage and— um, yeah, just a few adjustments. It's, it's not quite as exciting as Fight Week used to be, but um, we're focused, and uh, everyone will be out here right after the fight to celebrate. So, um, you know, it's just business as usual. I'm excited for things to open back up eventually, but now uh, this is fine. It, it kind of relates to being in prison and going and winning the fight and winning your freedom and go have some fun. There's obviously a lot of talk. Is Kelvin Gastelum starting to miss a step? Is he slowing down? And stuff like that, being on the three fight losing streak. What are your thoughts on where his game is at personally? Um, whether he's slowing down or not, that's on him. You know, I have to prepare for the best Kevin Gas Kelvin Gastelum and uh sorry, I keep saying Kevin. Kelvin Gastelum and you know, I'm expecting for him to be prepared, ready, on weight, and um for it to be just a, a war. And when usually when I expect for these things and I prepare for these things, that's when I get a finish. So that's what I'm expecting. Um, you know, it, his journey is his journey. So we're preparing for the best of him, and we'll see how it goes on Saturday. My final question, you guys are fighting on Valentine's Day weekend. I'm asking all of the fighters this. Ian, what's your idea of a romantic Valentine's Day? <laughs> Um, you know, actually, Valentine's Day is going to be my seven-year anniversary of freedom. So it's a very significant day for me. Um, you know, every day is kind of Valentine's Day with my wife. I try to treat her, you know, uh, romantically all the time and surprise her with flowers and all this stuff. So we don't look at that day as much as uh, like a Valentine's Day for me, but it's more of my, my, my celebration of my freedom um, that, I, that I got 2014 Valentine's Day. So... Um, but I guess an ideal day is hanging out on the beach and going to a nice dinner. Hey, thank you, Ian, and good luck. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Cote Cruz with Four to Win MMA. Hello, Ian. How you doing? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, sir. Thank you for your time. Uh, how's Fight Week going? How's Vegas treating you these days? Oh, fight week's going great. You know, I just left Colorado, and it's one of the coldest weeks there uh, of the year. And um, so I'm, I'm happy to be in warmer weather. And, you know, it's getting ready to start the weight cut. And everything's on point, feel good, passing COVID tests. So that's a plus. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great fight week. That's awesome to hear, man. Uh, would you say this fight against Kelvin Gastelum is the biggest one of your career so far? Uh, you know, every fight, your, your next fight's always your biggest fight. But yes, as far as magnitude of my opponent, absolutely, he's fought the best of the best. He's, he's you know, almost beat the champ that's undefeated. And um, yeah, I mean, this is a huge fight. This fight puts a stamp on my name that shows I'm a contender in this weight class, and it gets me back in the top 10. And uh, it's, just, it's just an exciting fight. I mean, look at our styles. We're going to brawl. So it's going to be fun. And um, he's definitely, I guess, my biggest test today. 
Absolutely. Well, uh, right now, Gastelum is on a three-fight skid against big names in the division. How do you feel about Kelvin coming into this fight? Do you feel he's bringing it like he's trying to stay under contract with the UFC? Yeah, absolutely. The guy doesn't want to lose his job. He doesn't want to uh, continue to lose. Losing is a terrible thing, and he's had to, you know, have that taste in his mouth for way too long. So I'm expecting him to be training hard, to be on weight, ready to fight um, you know, one of the best performances of his life. But um, if I'm training for that guy, if he's, you know, I'm, be I'm training to beat that guy. And if I can beat that guy, I can beat whatever Gaslam shows up. Yeah, and you fought through so much adversity to be here in this moment. Uh, knowing that you've survived through all those battles outside the cage, is there any comfort in the chaos of the UFC? Any what? Any comfort in the chaos that is the UFC? Oh, yeah. They call me the king of controversy for a reason, you know? I guess I thrive in that chaos, and, you know, this is a sport that totally matches my lifestyle, and it's something legal I can do. And, uh, you know, it's a way I can make a positive impact, too, using my testimony. It's actually pretty cool. Um, the day after my fight on the 14th is my seven-year anniversary of freedom. So this is this is a big one for me, and um, I'm excited to celebrate that day with my wife and, um, you know, get this big win. Well, in that regard, um, can you speak to anyone battling demons who are not as, as uh, athletically gifted as you are? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was... You know, seven years ago, I was rock bottom in a foreign prison cell, um, it, truly at rock bottom in my life. And four years after that, I got into the UFC. Seven years, I'm on a pay-per-view card fighting one of the um, one of the top guys in the division. And, um, you know, I'm an ex-drug addict. I'm an ex-convict. I've got two autoimmune diseases. Everyone told me I was too old to try MMA. I started when I was 26. So, um, you know, anyone out there hearing this that needs inspiration, don't listen to the doubters and the haters and the people who say you can't do it. Um, you know, pursue God, look to him and see what your, your God-given destiny is, and he will show you the path. And anything is possible with him and hard work and putting your soul and your heart into something. Thank you, sir. Final question from me. In a recent interview, you stated that your life has been like a movie. How does the Saturday part of this movie co-starring Kelvin Gastelum will play in the MMA's fan screen? Yeah, the, you know, this chapter of the movie, this chapter of the book, this part of the movie, uh, you know, it, with me, Kevin, Kelvin Gastelum going out there, putting on a, 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 just an insane performance, stealing the show, and me getting my hand raised. Thank you so much for your time, Ian. Thank Best you. Best of luck in your fight. Thank you. We'll take our next set of questions from Eric Idison with Kimura. Hi, and thanks for letting us talk to you. Yeah, um, no worries. You said in earlier interviews that you want to show your grappling skills more. Um, can we see you trying to take the fight to the ground on Saturday? Yeah, one of the key things for me in this fight is to have a good mixture, you know? I want to strike with him, I want to clinch with him, and I also do want to take him down and uh, show some of this, uh, you know, wrestling game that I've kind of faltered off of getting all those knockouts in my early days and falling in love with the striking and kind of getting away from my wrestling. I've really turned back and focused on that while continuing to grow my boxing. But um, you're going to see, you're going to see a mixture of everything, but I I'm expecting you to see some powerful, explosive takedowns and good wrestling. Very right, cool. And uh, with the win against Gaslam, how far away do you think you are from a title contention? Uh, you know, this year my goal is just to stay super active, and and obviously I want to get four Ws this year, and you know, four fights is a lot when you're in that top ten. But um, even if I got three, I want to just make a name for myself. I want to beat these guys. I want people to know I'm a force to be reckoned with in the middleweight division, and. Um, you know, be in title contention by 2022. All right, cool. And you kind of answered this question before, but we all heard about your incredible journey before joining the UFC. But do you still get nervous for fights, or is fighting in the UFC nothing compared to your past life experiences? Um, no, I mean, you know, I get ex it's a mixture between excitement and nervousness, and more nervous of just uh, of performing right you work so hard for so long uh you don't want to have that bad night you don't want to show up sick you don't want to 
And that's happened to me before. So um, that would be the only nervousness that it comes from. But I enjoy what I do. And, you know, I've been in situations where you can get in a fight and there's no one to pull anyone off. So it's, it's do or die. And, you know, we're in a cage where a ref is there. So it's a little different magnitude as far as that. But um, the excitement and nerves always come. And, and actually, you can use those for fuel. And that's what I do. For sure. Thank you so much. Thank you.